Welcome back to video three. We're going to study watercolor resist. I'm going to use this book to um, pick out a subject and I think I'm going to do a little animal but whatever you do, whatever you choose for your subject, you're going to want to make sure it's simple. So let's try this simple turtle and I'm going to lightly sketch um, starting in square one I'm going to lightly sketch in the turtle's head and I'm going to move through each frame and draw in the turtle. All right, now that I've got my turtle drawn, I've put in a few details. I'm going to use a glue bottle, and I hope you have one around the house, maybe an old one from school. But open it up and make sure that you don't have it on full blast. Make sure you, that you adjust it to give a nice line so that you can draw your turtle out with the glue bottle. Just trace around the lines, but you want to lay down enough glue so that it forms a bead of glue. Now that you've traced your drawing with the glue, let's put that away and we'll set our turtle aside so it can dry overnight. Hello again. Our turtle is dry now and the lines on the drawing are hard and will resist watercolor when we go to paint. So the glue acts as a resist it, or a channel to hold the paint in the place that you want to put it. So add your colors to your turtle or your drawing, whatever you made. And work around your drawing and when it dries, you'll see that those lines of glue have resisted the watercolor paints, adding a very nice effect. Sometimes, if you get too much watercolor in one area, use your paper towel and dab out your brush and pick up some of the wetness that has pooled where you don't want it. I'm going to take a little off the back flipper as well because it's a little too heavy. Okay. So now let's put our turtle into a background and an atmosphere, a place for this turtle to live. So I'm seeing that he's going to be half in, half out of the water. So I'm putting in a water line. The top is going to be the water and the bottom is going to be sand. So we'll just do a light wash here and blend it out. And the glue, again, is going to resist the watercolor where it meets the turtle. So it'll be a nice line when it dries. I'm just doing light water.
And let's mix up with a sand color. Don't worry if it's a little heavy. You can always use a little more water and blend it out. But that's the water's edge there, meeting the sand. And I'm going to use just a little water on my brush as I do this fade. It's graduated fade from dark to light. This will be a good time to think about some of the things we did in video two. And um, I'm thinking I might want to use a little salt to create some sand texture. So I'm very carefully adding a little salt. Less is more. And I'll get those uh, little crystally bursts of watercolor when it dries. So let's see what happens after that dries. Let's try another resist technique in watercolor. This time we're going to use crayons. You should have a pack of 16 colors of Crayola crayons in your kit. And once we do our drawing, the watercolor will re resist where you put down the crayon marks. You want to think of something simple here. Um, you can do a cityscape, uh, just abstract colors, um, whatever you would like to do. A drawing, you can take your time with your drawing and put down enough color though to I uh, have wax on the paper because wax and water repel each other. So, 4th of July, I think I'm going to make some fireworks all over my paper. After you've made your drawing, let's set the crayons aside now and we're going to take some watercolors and for this I'm going to put in a night sky with my larger brush and I'm going to just go ahead and mix up a tray of color in my paint lid and I need to have enough to cover the whole painting because I'm going to do a flat wash. So let's add a little water to make enough paint so I'll be able to make it all the way across the paper. So I see the color is quite strong here. I'm going to add some water. If your color is too strong, you won't be able to see the crayons shine through underneath. So add a little water if it's too dark and Continue to create your wash and you can see how those colors are really popping through the watercolor wash. And that's what we want. So that the crayons, the wax of the crayons resist the water of the watercolors. Fill in the rest of your wash and looking good. Now we're going to let that dry and set it aside so that I can put another later, layer on later. Now that that wash is dry, um, you can see that the colors are wonderful 
so far, but I think I'm going to add a few more details to my fireworks because after seeing them um, last night, I want to add a few more lights into my uh, drawing. And the white crayon is really wonderful for this. But let's put some more colors in. Okay, now that we have another layer of wax onto our fireworks drawing, I'm going to do one more wash. And this time I'm going to use a little darker sky, but I'm going to still try to preserve some of the purple that I laid down on the first wash. So again, be careful of black. It's very strong. So if you're going to mix it with another color, you want more of that other, more of the other color than black. Black just a little bit. Okay, let's try it. I'm going to just put it in different areas. I might not do the whole painting with the extra layer of this color. I'm just going to put in a few areas and watch those crayons pop through. You can see the additional crayon marks that I made really added lots of detail and movement to the painting. I'm just going to put a few more in. I hit a few more areas here. Try to get rid of some of the brush strokes. And there we go. Let's let that dry and see what happens. I hope you've enjoyed these videos so that you can learn how to make a watercolor painting. When I come back, I'll show you all of the paintings from the three videos after they've dried. And here are our paintings that we did through the three videos. I'd like to show you um, more, but when you're practicing at home, you're going to find out all kinds of things on your own. You're going to discover new ways to use your watercolors. And just keep watercoloring. It's a wonderful world. And I hope you have a great summer. Stay safe. And we'll see you next year. Thank you for watching.